name's Richard Cook. I'm uh, here to tell you the story of how I first got involved with fast jets. The story started really when I was commissioned to do a, a piece on life on board HMS Art Royal. And uh, I was taking pictures on the flight deck of uh, the aircraft taking off. They'd given me a, a set of air defenders, but they didn't give me a little hat to hold them on with. With the wind coming down the deck, which is about 40 knots, and the blast from the Phantom in Reheat, it lifted my ear defenders clean off. And if you ever need ear defenders, it's when you're that close to the back end of a Phantom. So I hit the deck and I was fairly impressed. And I said to my MOD escort, I wouldn't mind a ride in one of those. Uh, but I never gave it another thought. He rang me up a couple of weeks later and said he, uh, he couldn't arrange me to fly with the Phantom Squadron. Um, but would I like to go flying with the Jaguar squadron? I said, so I like, caught not off. He said, could I interest a magazine? I rang the Illustrated London News. They bought the story straight away and he made the necessary arrangements. There are two things you have to do before you fly in a fast jet. One is you have to pass an RAF medical and the other is you have to go through a decompression training course at RAF North Luffnam. So I did the medical in London and then went on this uh, teaching decompression course. The first day is really just a series of lectures on um, aviation medicine and the second day is an experience in the uh, decompression chamber. You put on an oxygen mask and they suck out the air to the equivalent of uh, 25,000 feet. You then take your oxygen mask off and you write down a few uh, mathematical sums and you write Mary had a little lamb and your name and address and uh, and your symptoms. You write down how you're feeling and the reason for this is so you can recognize those feelings if they happen in the air. If your oxygen supply or air mix is contaminated or depleted um, you recognize the symptoms before you um, fall unconscious. And the reason you have to experience it is it's like being drunk and it takes different people in different ways. Anyway, whilst I was on this course I met a, a guy called Alan Voyle, who was the squadron leader, Alan Voyle, who was the uh, commanding officer of the Red Arrow Support Squadron. Well, we got on like a household fire and when we finished the course he said, well, you know, if ever I can do anything to help you, if you want to um, do anything with the Red Arrows, just let me know. I then went to number 6 squadron at Ori of Coltishall, where I was kitted out and uh, strapped into the back seat by a member of the squadron. My back seat brief consisted of, if it's yellow and black, don't touch it. Uh, yellow and black is uh, all to do with ejector seats. I asked him what I could take. He said, what do you want to take? I said, a spare body, a couple of lenses. and. Uh, four or five rolls of film. He said, oh, that's, uh, that, that, that'll be fine. So we went on a sortie to the north of Scotland where we did some ultra-low flying and some terrain following close formation work so that I could take pictures of the, the aircraft. We also went up to high altitude for some uh, air-to-air refueling, which the pilots describe as uh, like taking a running f with a rolling donut. <laughs> and uh, on the way back, we were almost home when my pilot, who was uh, Pete Orme, who went on to be a, a very illustrious test pilot, said, you see the throttle, that's the thing on the left which is moving now, and he moved his, um, and mine moved there. He said, there's a rocker switch on the end, can you tell me whether the back is down or the front is down or whether it's parallel? I said, the back is down, I think, it might have been the other way around. He said, could you put it so that it is parallel with the end of the throttle? I just did that. And he said on the intercom, thank Christ for that. It was an override for the air brakes, which I had obviously caught with my knee. Um, and uh, with the air brakes out, we didn't have enough fuel to go anywhere. It was like dragging a barn door. <laughs> so that was very interesting. This was my first air-to-air -air sortie, and uh, it was a steep learning curve. Um, I knew we'd be pulling G, I thought, you know, possibly four or five. My camera was going to weigh four or five times as much. I thought, well, that's no problem. <laughs> um, I had forgotten that my arms were going to weigh four or five times as much. And 
my head was going to weigh four or five times as much. Plus the fact that taking pictures out of the side of the canopy, you're not sitting properly like the, like the pilot is looking forwards. You're sort of scrunched round and so that makes that quite difficult. I managed to get a couple of decent pictures and um, they ran a, this one across a double page spread. And the picture editor from the Sunday Times Colour magazine saw it and he wrote me a note on Sunday Times letter heading saying how much you liked the picture. I mean, what an amazing thing to do. If you've enjoyed today's story, remember to like it, subscribe and tell your friends. Next time, I'll tell you what happened when I went flying in the lightning.